Hey, everybody, we're doing a new thing. We're doing the rewind reel. So we, <laughs> episode, we handpicked this episode because we thought that there was tremendous value. Check it out. Re-listen. It's always good to sharpen the what? The rewind wheel. The brain. The sword. Look at Figuring out what ultimately became the Warriors' Way game, which was a game of fight system that now 50,000 plus men in 27 different countries are playing, all inspired, driven by now the curriculum found inside of the Warrior Book and the entire breakdown series is coming. Like it became this science, but I didn't know that at the time. All I was trying to do was figure out how to be more powerful as a businessman. So I would do body being balanced every day, make a deposit with one of my kids and my wife, send them something. Meditate and study something spiritual. Work out and I would drink green smoothies. I got introduced to that and I was like, I'm gonna try this. So I would do this and guess what? I started seeing things differently in business. It's what I called reverse engineered production. I was like, okay, I wanna solve a production problem, but the problem is I have these three anchors of guilt, shame, and weight that are pulling me back and body being a balance. So if I can handle those, possibly I can handle the conversation of business better and it worked. <laughs> that's great and I, I everybody has those has something because not every you have to consciously work on each element of yourself and you know in order to feel good about it and if, when we let those things go it might be a week it might be two weeks it might be months or years they do start pulling you down and when you're at work you're not as productive so i i totally i totally get that that's huge i think no, it's mad. Well, it's a, it's like more than I give it, particularly, listen, I know our audience is listening to this right now. You guys are in an insurance game. If you're in a PNC game, you guys are a different breed. Okay. So like, you're going to be over here in your category. PNC guys are over here. You're great. I got a couple good friends, huge state, all state agencies, like one of the biggest in Orange County, biggest in Southern California. Like they run some really big stuff. They're very amazing. Ted Bauman, like a few other guys, great men. Okay, PNC guys have a different psychology. The guys I'm really going to talk to are guys that deal with life insurance. All you life insurance agents, like I need you to understand the concept. The Warriors Way is the greatest frame of all time. The greatest frame of all time for selling life insurance. There is nothing. Do you know what Wall, Wall Steve Waddles, all these personal development guys were born in the depression because they were trying to sell insurance. Insurance is the hardest shit in the world to sell, yet everybody needs it. And when you understand what life insurance actually is and the protection of human life value, it is easy to sell. Why? Because the people want to buy. That's the challenge though, is that you have to buy into this hook, line, and sinker, which means if your life doesn't have value to you, you're going to struggle to encourage others to see value in their own life. And the protection of human life value is the entire conversation of insurance. Fuck banking strategies and no, paid up additions and paid up addition writers and anything else to go no, put all that to the side. If you just look at the baseline of protection, here's the deal. If you hate your wife, you don't want to protect yourself. Why? Because when you die, you hope she gets fucked. <laughs> you don't care. Right. I know this in myself. When I fully was all in with my wife, all in. No, like, we're going to get divorced. No car warmed up in the driveway. I'm going to bail. No wandering eyes constantly checking out other women. No, nothing. Like, when I was all in, when I was all in, I had a radical shift inside of my own heart about protecting my family, protecting myself, and protecting my business. I remember going into surgery for an Achilles tendon repeat thing they were fixing just a couple of years ago. And I'm sitting there weeping before I go to surgery. And I had had tumors and lost my teeth and all I, listen, I've had a shitload of very intense surgeries where doctors were very worried if I'd come back and I was not stressed. But I also didn't care about my life. Like I didn't have much, I didn't have much to live for. I didn't care really. I didn't, it wasn't like I was, oh, I'm gonna die. Then all of a sudden I built something that mattered and a marriage that mattered. And, if, and I loved my children and my kids loved being with me. And I had a life that I woke up to every day that was exciting and on fire. And here I was going into surgery, recognizing for the first time, even though I'd had major surgery 10 or 12 times, recognizing they're going to take me to death's door and they're going to hold me there. And there are people that don't come back from this shit on basic operations because they're hovering you above death.
with medication. Somebody has a rough morning, they fuck up the medication, I die. Mm -hmm. I don't come back. I lie down on the table, I do not come back. And I wanted to live. I was like, Phew. I was the one that pushed for more insurance. I'm not, listen, I'm a, part, I'm a partner in a general agency, but like my, I was pushing for it more than my agents were pushing for it. Because I'm like, listen, I want, I want the certainty that comes when I get on a plane. I want to get on a plane and I want to know. I don't want to think. I don't want to hope. I want to know. I want to know I transferred 100% of the risk in my world to a company that's willing to partner with me. In my case, it's One America and a few others, Penn Mutual, who partnered with me in this. I'm like, listen, we'll take on the risk. You give us a premium. We'll take on a risk so that you can have a psychological frame as a producer that lets you know on a daily basis, shit is okay. You can spend, you can build, you can grow. And if something happens, everything's okay. And so I, I don't, I didn't, when I started to live the warrior's way, I started to care about me. I started to care about my wife. I started caring about my kids. And this naturally blended itself over to protecting my employees, protecting my clients, protecting my wife, protecting my children, because you only protect what you value. Mm. Why do guys buy the minimum of insurance coverage? Because they don't see the value in what they have. Once you see what you have, once you recognize the value of what you have and who you are, then the answer is always the same. Maximum amount qualified for that economically lines up and doesn't put you at poverty's door. Whatever that is, you go. And then from that foundation of certainty, you fucking build. And you build and then you stabilize and protect. And then you build and then you stabilize and protect. And then you build and you stabilize and protect. And you build the fucking walls and you build the moat around the castle and you hire the full-time fucking archers up on top to shoot any motherfucker that comes close. And you stockpile huge amounts of cash at the core of these castles where the queen and your children and you sit in a place. You know, like, oh, I need more ad spend. No, asshole, it doesn't make any sense to keep expanding the walls of your kingdom when you're using plastic Tupperware forks as a wall to keep people out. Good for you. You just took an entire area. You expanded the kingdom. Well done. Don't worry. Tomorrow, a bunch of seventh graders with BB guns are going to fucking take it. <laughs> I have a little bit of an opinion on this topic. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, though, I, this is such a good... This is what a lot of people need to hear straight up. Like sometimes you need to be beat over the head with stuff. So it's good. I it's wish good. somebody had talked to me this way. Like nobody like Gary Gunderson did a great job of introducing this. Michael G. Isom, both these two are men who have been advisors to me inside the insurance world for, you know, since shit like 14, 15, 16 years ago. And and, and so I get it. Like I see it. I think it's why I get so frustrated with agents. So many that I meet is because they don't get it. They got into insurance for the same reason I got into mortgages. You just defaulted into it, mm -hmm. right? It's like a chiropractor becomes a chiropractor who doesn't really have a passion for people. Well, his clinic will always become a pain practice. But pure mm -hmm. chiropractors build prevention practices. They don't build pain clinics. They don't go the hospital model, right? And it's unfortunate because I swear if most, if most agents, and here's the crazy part is like agents who get this, like agents who get this, who get the soul of what insurance is about, they get the soul of it, but they also get the tactical execution of it. And then they live a very simple principle, which is they learned that listening to shows like this, they live it and then they lead it, right? Which is what I live my life by now. It's not what I lived my life on before. I would learn some shit and then I would lead it. I didn't actually live most of it. I lived, lived like half of it. And so I would lead a lot from theory. And I would lead, and I was young, I was in my 20s and my early 30s, and I, I just didn't know any different. I was fake it till you make it, it was what we were taught. It was like, hey, you just don't do your thing and, and, uh, and eventually it works out. And then I recognized that was not the case. And I recognized that if I was a liar to me, I'd lie to my clients. 
And if I didn't tell the truth to myself, if I couldn't tell the truth to me, how could I look at a client and tell the truth to them? How can, you, how can I push somebody to get something as a product that I don't have myself? How can I push somebody to do something that I don't do myself? When it doesn't become selling anymore, and when it simply becomes serving, when it becomes a conversation, instead of you trying to convince people, when it becomes that as a conversation for you is because it's become who you are. And your marketing changes and your sales change. I mean, worrywealth.com, we have an entire movie series that I put up there on the conversation of wealth. And that thing produces leads for us every single day, all day long. I'm not even trying and yet I walk circles around most people in the insurance agency. I'm not, I wouldn't even consider myself an insurance agent. Why? Because I consume the product. I live it. I stock the cash. I put PUA in. I go to the limit. I play the game hard. Why well, sit with my bankers at Chase and the private bankers here on all of my relationships that try to convince me otherwise? I'm like, no, no, I put my money in three places. I put my money in myself. I put my money in my businesses and I put my money into cash policies. That's it. I don't put my money anywhere else. Well, what about these securities over here? No. You tell me I should go invest in somebody else's business instead of invest in my mind? Not, mine, not going to happen. If you're a professional at doing that, then good for you. Go do that. <laughs> Gary, you want to buy real estate? No, I do not. I only buy the buildings that my businesses operate in. That's it. And then my businesses pay myself lease. Well, Gary, do you want to buy this development over here because it looks so cool and blah, blah, blah? No. Hey, Gary, do you want to get into hemp? You want to get into marijuana? You want to be part of this dispensary? I'm like, no, listen, I don't even like smoking weed. I smoke weed, I feel paranoid. I was like, I'm not a user of the product. I'm not getting involved. I don't own a business in that industry. You guys smoke weed. You love smoking weed. I'm not saying you do smoke weed. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But <laughs> my friends like smoke weed like crazy. I'm like, dude, good good. Yeah, but there's so much money. I'm like, yeah, but that's, I, I don't give a shit. Well, you want to just be a silent investor? I was like, I'm not doing that ever again. No. That's cool. I have no man. idea if this is adding value to your listeners, but. Oh, it's awesome. A hundred percent. Garrett, <laughs> as, as you started to, to win, right? It was a long time down in the ditch and, and, and you started to win and come back. Did you, did you feel the old ego start to sneak in? Or yeah. was it that, yeah, how did you deal with that? I know that you had the balance and you had, you know, the mind, the body and the, you had your <laughs> formula. Um, well, dude, I, I mean, I'll, I'll give you some examples. This, this happened in the last year and a half, right? So my wife and I are in the hair industry and um, we're in financial services too. And then I'm in obviously coaching and training, consulting. And then we have information products. Like we do, we were in software. We, we, we have supplements like Warrior Greens that just came out. Like we have a lot of, I'm involved in a lot of things right now, but one of one of the things that just happened last year and a half is I got distracted in, a, in an interesting way. So we live in Orange County. My wife and I run salons and she runs a specific method of hair extension known as Natural Beta Rose. She created it herself. I helped build the branding, packaging and marketing around it. And um, we reframed the way that salons were done. And in that led to thousands of hairstylists who train with us now on these methodologies of how to do the hair, how to run their salons and how to, how to build a marketing system to support people who apply to get their hair done, which sounds crazy. If you're like, why would you apply to get the hair done? I was like, uh, yeah, we're going to do that. And we did. And it worked. And it's worked amazing. Well, a lot of our clients uh, in the salons are big YouTubers, Orange County housewives, like they're celebrities from LA. There's just, there's a lot of, so we get invited to a lot of crazy shit. We get invited to all these parties and we get to hang out with these people. And I, I never really gave a shit at all. And so my wife, one night going on date night, we're going to go to this thing. And it was a few years ago, David August, who runs David August Suits, uh, him and Conor McGregor became the suit line. But David August has been putting clothing, clothing air that's been pretty popular around here. He's in New York here. And he clothed a lot of very powerful people. His kids and our kids went to the same school. My wife, while we saw him, she'd be like, oh, look how good David looks. I'm like, fuck, David. I don't want to <laughs> I'll wear my Lulu anti ball crushing pants and my band. So please stop it. I don't give a shit about how good, even though in my mind, I was like, he looks pretty good, dude. The guy looks pretty good. So one night I'm going to go out on a date and go to this party and I got nothing. I got a plaid t-shirt and I got like jeans and my wife's dressed the nine. She's huge in fashion. She looks good. And she's like, you just, I, she's like, huh, can I be straight with you? I was like, of course. She's like, you look like shit. I was like, She's like, I know you're beautiful. I know you're gorgeous. I love you. I was like, but we're going somewhere and walk. Like, look at me. Look at you. I was like, you're not even trying. Like, a wake up where your t shirt is not trying. You wear that every day. I was like, yeah, but it's a new wake up where your t shirt. 
<laughs> so I end up, we end up going down this way and getting a suit. So she gets me one suit, which then turns into, because I'm in the hair world and the fashion world, I start getting more suits. Next thing you know, I'm wearing sparkly Louis Vuitton shoes and like all this like crazy shit that is happening in the hair game. And I start to, I, we have new marketing counselors and consultants that are coming in. You got a hard flex, you need the soft flex. Here's what you need to do. You need to start putting your Lambos in the videos. I'm like, dude, I don't put the Lambos in the videos. That's like <laughs> kind of a messaging. Like I drive, drive the Lambos till I like them. I don't put them in the videos because I want people to give a shit. So that my marketing and things started changing. Shit started getting confused. Um, and the hair game and warrior all kind of came together. So I came to a head with this about eight, nine months ago. And to the point I was, I was very disappointed in myself. Very disappointed. Um, it's not like I'd done anything wrong to anyone. It's just to answer your question, Craig, like I had gotten to a place where I, there was a piece in my mind, the guy from 2007, mm -hmm. who pulled in with the entourage into, into Las Vegas, was paying for everything. <laughs> right. Doing like just that guy, there was a piece of that, that guy, who was coming further and further to the surface. Now, I still live in the worries where we're still serving people, but there was an edge of arrogance that was built. Start sneaking I could, in. I could feel it coming. Mm -hmm. And I was like, but I didn't recognize it because it was so subtle and so slow. And then I got to this point where I was like, what the fuck am I doing? This was in March. We're running the biggest hair event we had run at the time. $5,000 a ticket to be at this thing. Packed house, massive. 400 girls inside this event, like big. I walk off a stage and I come to the side room for the speakers. I put my CFO in on all our teams and my wife. I said, I'm out. Like, I'm out. Like, I will give you executives, team members, whatever you need to take care of this, but I'm out. I'm done. I'm not fucking doing this anymore. And I put on my suits wow. in the closet. I stopped all the photo shoots. And I stopped letting my teams push it. And we, we saw trailing ads and stuff everywhere. So I was like, that's not how I built this. I'm not going to mm -hmm. go back to that guy. Yeah, I don't, and it's not about suits and it's not about cars and it's not about money. It was about an energy, which is I forgot for a moment about the mission. Mm. I, got, I, I forgot about the mission. We started going to thousands of men. That's not what I wanted to do. I canceled WarriorCon 4. That cost me $600,000. I had to wire the Hyatt Hotel to cancel that event at the end of this year. We had almost 1,000 tickets already sold. I had to refund tickets, rerun different events for people. And people were like, why are you doing that? I was like, because I don't give a fuck about walking into a room with 3,000 people. I don't give a fuck about it. I can book speaking engagements like that all day long. And I say no to all those. That is not what I want. What I want is change. What I want is impact. What I want is a man who's sitting in the car, looking in the mirror and feeling the shit that I was feeling. I want that guy to know. I want him to know because I got hundreds of case studies of men coming to this fucking place, powerful men, powerful producers who are lost and they're hurting and they're alone and the shiny shit and all of it is fucking bullshit and it doesn't matter mm. what matters is real what matters is like a conversation what matters is connection and so i built a training facility here at my offices i said we're just gonna bring 24 guys in i made a smaller person we're gonna bring them in we're gonna do two events every single week we're gonna have 50 guys a week come through this place so we're gonna get to know them and i'm gonna connect with them i got i got a bit happening right now down the hallway the second one of this week with guys sitting here in the office real guys learning the warrior's way being real with each other, powerful men who just need a place to be themselves. Not another place to peacock around and I got this fucking car and I got these suits, fuck it. My suits sit in, they make me disgusted. I don't know, it's like weird. I look at them now and I'm like, I don't give a fuck. I don't give, I don't give a fuck about any of that. I never did. I never did, that's the crazy part. Before mortgages, I never did. It's nice. I like it. Do you know why I got it? Because my wife wanted me to look different when I'm, when I'm on date night. And you know what? I love my wife. I want to look good for her on date night. The rest of the week, I'm going to wear warrior black. I'm going to wear the same damn pants. I'm going to wear the same damn shirt. I'm going to wear the same damn shoes. I do. I have an entire closet full of the same shirt, <laughs> same pants, same underwear, same socks, same shoes every single day. Why? Because I don't want to spend time thinking about it. Mm. I want to spend time thinking about the thing that matters to me which is like this mission of Wake Up Warrior, which is to wake men up and give them the tools they need tools that if I'd had them, conversations, if I'd had them, I never would have ended. I never would have lost my first company. Never. Wouldn't have lost them. 
because I would have been in tune with myself. I'd have been listening. We started knocking. We weren't losing the companies. We weren't risking anything the last year and a half, but there was a, there was a trend that was happening, Fred. Like, like it was trending. I could feel it. Now that I look back, it was not something that was going to happen this year or next year, mm-hmm. probably even the year after that. But I could see a slow, subtle, just decline in what I want to represent as a human being. I don't have a problem with nice clothes. I don't have a problem with going to parties. I don't have a problem with like people doing anything they want to do. But to answer your question, yeah, it can creep in. And yeah, the arrogance with my wife. And when she was pregnant with our daughter, who's two and a half months old, I had to cross check the fuck out of myself. Because the last time she was pregnant with our eight-year-old, I cheated. And I was a fucking idiot. And the fact that I had dug myself that hole and she took me back and we got to have a relationship that was rebuilt. This last, I was the most locked down fucking guy on the planet. I didn't look at anybody. I don't train women. I don't coach women. It's part of the reason why I got out of it. I was like, I do not deal with women. Why? Because I'm not stupid. Coach man, because I'm a man and I'm not a homosexual man, which means I'm not drawn to another man, which means I can be in an environment where I, I can be your brother. I can be with you. We can have real conversation. And that place, I'm, I'm guarded. I'm safe. I put up my walls. I'm not going to be the guy that risks my risks to try to prove, oh, I can hang out over here and still be okay. No, fuck you. I'm not going to go to see who can get close to the edge of the cliff. I'm going to stay 12 feet back from the cliff and I'm going to build a concrete barrier so I don't ever go to the cliff. I don't even want to see the cliff. I'm going to stay in this lane. I'm going to take care of my wife. I'm going to take care of my kids. I'm going to take care of my family. And the guy was died. But there was a piece of him. Mm -hmm. Piece of him. Started giving shit about the wrong things again. And it's okay. I didn't get angry at him. I stacked him through some tools that we had. And I spent a couple months trying to figure out, okay, well, what, what took me down this path? Well, I had already fulfilled what I needed to. I helped my, my wife get her businesses off the ground. And now it was time for me to focus on back on my, my 100% on the thing I was called to do. So she can now do the thing that she's called to do, which is work with all these amazing women in the hair industry and change their lives, which she is. Giving them ATM machines. These women are making more money than their husbands. And many of them, they're the income earner. They're single moms with two kids trying to provide for themselves. And in the hair industry, these women are making $100,000, $200,000 a year, working three days a week, still getting to be full-time moms with their kids while still making money. And I helped my wife build that for the last four years. Well, now I got to pl- unplug and do my own thing. So it's a daily thing. I wake up mm-hmm. crazy every morning. Every morning I wake up crazy. <laughs> Literally. And most guys, if they're honest, wake up crazy every morning. Yeah. Yeah. It's like pressure to like, how do you deal with this? And how, particularly when you start dealing with bicycles with insurance. Insurance is a weird game too, because you got these long bicycles. It can take like two, three months, four months. And, and so... To make it and be successful in the insurance space, it requires you to be a different type of human being. You have to really care. I mean, you can make money and be a dickhead for sure. Plenty of, <laughs> but you can do that in any industry. So, right. right. Well, I think it's really cool that um, to your point of somebody who's like the chiropractor um, who really cares. I mean, you're a hundred percent. You care about your movement and your and dudes out there. Yeah. Um, and it really shows, man. I, I mm-hmm. you, that's why we wanted to have you on here more than anything is because we think that this message and the, how real you are with us and, and knowing that, Hey dude, we all need to constantly be tuned. A car constantly needs to be tuned. Like a, a guy needs to constantly be tuned. And, um, I don't, I think we end up focusing on our businesses and not the whole that why we're why are we making this money like what about our family our kids and everything else like it's you can get so consumed in that that world especially with i think insurance agents oh it's a it's a very uh it's an all-consuming game to be successful in insurance like you have to be obsessed Hmm. like and i i think that's the case in anything and the minute you become obsessed it becomes very easy to isolate everything else and to justify it and society allows you to justify it and in the reality is your wife and your kids allow you to justify it mm. in our society men have been taught that if you can make some money if you make money you're good like that's the american culture if you make money you're good all right you can be overweight you can ignore your kids a bit. I mean, people will give you, they'll give you a hall pass. You get a hall pass for it. And people look by it, right? Take a guy who's broken, overweight. People don't give him the hall pass. 
to a guy who's wealthy and overweight, we give him a hall pass, right? It's just, it is what it is. Women over 30, they're not interested in fitness. They're interested in security. They want money. They want stability, which again, supports the hall pass. And we got a society that supports the hall pass, which is if you get paid. So men have been taught, none of us were wrong. We were born into this. We were born, don't have any feelings. Number one. Number two, we don't really need you which is interesting because the entire rise of the feminist movement is teaching this. Mm. We don't really need men in between like lesbian, gay, transgender, Q, whatever the fuck. I was talking about my daughters about this, like 12 and eight years old. They're trying to explain it all to me. I was like, so many damn letters. What the hell's all mean? And she's like, what's a Q? And she's like, Q means question. I was like, she's like, geez, dad. I'm like, kept questioning what? Well, they're questioning, questioning what? what the fuck does this mean? They're questioning. Well, they're questioning. I'm just like, dude, there's so much shit going on. And so much happening now that as a man, there's a shitload that is oppressing who you are as a man. And women don't like to hear this. <laughs> and particularly, particularly everybody in the alphabet movements, they don't want to hear this. Particularly, they don't want to hear this from a white guy, but I don't want to hear this from a white guy. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I had an Asian woman. She's like super powerful business consultant. She came up and she said, you know what you need to do? And I was like, what's that? She's like, you need to write a book. I was like, what's this book called? She said, The Great White Hope. I was like, what are you talking about? She's like, I'm not kidding. And I, I didn't know what she was, she recognized. She's she a very powerful woman, very powerful woman of Wall Street. She's like, you need to write a book called The Great White Hope. And she said, what? I said, I'll tell you right now, what's going to end up happening, and I'm already watching it happen, is that white successful businessmen are going to end up with nowhere to go because anything they say, they will be crucified for it. And she's like, I watch it happen with all my clients, all my hedge fund managers, all of our, everyone. And she's all, it doesn't happen for everybody the same way. And she's all, I realize, and she's like, I can get away with saying this as an Asian woman. She's like, I know. And I was like, you think I'm gonna take a stand on that topic as a, as a white guy? And she's <laughs> like, no, take a stand for men. This yeah. was years ago. She's like, take a stand for men because the tides are shifting. Men are confused. And our younger generations coming up, it is a complete and utter nightmare. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's a complete nightmare. Like, give us another 15 years and, like, we won't even not only be able to fill up military, like, like we will, like, our side is going to fucking fall apart. Like, men must rise. If they don't, I'm sorry, you can pump a woman full of testosterone all day long and sew a penis on her. She's not a guy. No different than <laughs> when you cut a man's penis off and turn it into a vagina, and he's still not a woman. Right. So when I speak about being a man, like this is a conversation of crucial order. And women think it's a conversation against women or I'm not supporting women, not the case. You want a marriage and a family that's on fire? You better have a husband that's on fire. You better have a man in that house that's on fire because you cannot be the man and woman at the same time without a radical impact on your children. No matter how amazing of a mom you are, at the end of the day, testosterone-driven male guidance influences your daughters more than you could ever influence your daughters as their mother. And so we 100%. run into fucking chaos with boys who've been raised by their moms. I, my dad was like non-existent in my life. He was there, but he was a silent bystander. And then there was my mom and my mom was amazing. She was the alpha mom and she did the best she could. And she taught me how to be a man, even though she had breasts and a vagina, which was a, a very good effort on her part. And then I had to figure out how to do it. So Wake Up mm -hmm. Warrior is an amazing place. We love what we do here. Um, obviously, you can tell I have a deep passion for insurance. I think it's an amazing tool. I believe it's an amazing weapon. I think insurance agents, if they do it right, um, are on a soul journey and that the right people will come into the game. They've got to learn how to market. They've got to learn how to sell. But just consider that locking yourself down with a game like we play here in the Warriors way, which you can learn more about that at bethemand.com. And some of it, we have a seven-part series there that is available that we'll talk about the seven pits that married businessmen with children face on a daily basis, some of the power moves you can make to offset them. And then also I told you about uh, warriorwealth.com. Uh, just check that out. Like that'll give you an idea yeah. if you're looking to market your business, uh, what a marketing system could look like and what we do to market for uh, insurance inside of our agency. And, 
and how that uh, might be able to support you guys also. That's awesome. It we is couldn't awesome. Have asked more of you. <laughs> like, thank you so much for taking an incredible amount of time with us. And gosh, that that was awesome. That's thank awesome, you. Garrett. Thank you, Craig. I appreciate it. Thank you both for having me on the show. And uh, I look forward to doing more with you guys. I'm getting uh, the beat notification. I get to go down the hall to my little training room and go do it. And speak it up. So thank you both so much for this today. For all the listeners out there, listen, podcasts like these change lives. They do. So if you're listening to this podcast and you're listening, you're getting value from this show or any of the other shows, continue to share this show up with everyone else around you uh, who you know, particularly who are in the insurance space, because yes, even though you're associated with other agents who tell you they're okay, and the reality is most of them are not, and they're looking for help, they're looking for guidance, they're looking for another brother inside of the industry that they're in that they can trust. And you got two individuals running an amazing show every single week, bringing guests like myself on to give you value. So do what you can on your part to support the show by sharing it up today so thanks so much for being here today thank you garrett thanks for having me on the show garrett awesome thank you so much you got it see you buddy hi bro <laughs> oh <laughs> dude harco road told me he goes he goes dude he's like talking to a cult leader you, you just see you just wait he's like you're gonna be like you're gonna sign up you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna fall in love with him I'm like, holy dude, I want to go do the freaking warrior week. Let's go do it together. <laughs> dude, you realize he just like, so the beginning. I had fucking tears and chills. Like, dude, this, this, here. <laughs> this is going to put us on the map. Like, like the beginning. Wow. Well, what, how did the beginning go? Where he, um, you mean after he, the, after the no video. Yeah. There was some gold and I was like, dude, I, I can the make whole a whole thing is gold. I can make a trailer using this and saying coming soon i can use the end of that and that's going to be i mean he just like the end of it we need to plug on the end of every show I'm or just, at the beginning of every show in the middle of every show <laughs> dude this is like that was he's a master that, dude that brought more value to us than anybody could have like that was unreal we just got a testimonial from garrett motherfucking white like uh, and we had him he also went off about the gender thing which will be very very controversial <laughs> but i love it well dude it's great it's true it, he didn't say anything that was it i honestly think that if anybody heard that they go well that makes sense that, i mean that's just it it's and just, you know how he told the story from the perspective of an asian woman like, isn't that interesting how he did that? Like saying, yeah. this is how you have to do it. This is, you can't say that Garrett, but you know what I mean? Like he's a, he's a genius, dude. He's a marketing genius. I mean, honestly, that, that went in so many different directions. When he, started, when he started tearing up, I was like, oh my gosh, like this is the dude. greatest thing I've ever seen. I can't believe that. Like I, if I watched that as a viewer, I would have been like, this is freaking spectacular. But like, we were the guys interacting with him and he's calling us by name. Like, dude. Unreal. Oh, here, I'll stop. You the think, Greg. <laughs> Love that. Hey, Jason. Yes, Mr. Craig. That was another awesome episode, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Well, if people want to get a little bit more action and, and learn how to do, uh, write 100,000 in premium, off yes. of even the worst internet leads, where could they go? They can go to live.teledudes.com. Ooh, that sounds exciting. Are we going to be there? Yes. It's a weekly call that we're doing right now that will, it's live and it will show you the process. The entire process mm. is super awesome. Mm. I love it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Sign up right now, live.teledudes.com. Live.teledudes.com. That's live.teledudes.com. Hey, Craig, there's a new community that we are starting that I cannot wait to tell everybody about. It is our live texting community where you and I are going to answer people's questions and give them free content, right? Are you kidding me? We get yep. to talk to them? Yeah, which is awesome, but they have to opt in. They have to text us at 520 520- Two one four two two one nine. That's five two zero two one four two two one nine. Nice. I'm Greg. Are you going to respond to these texts? 
I'm going to respond to him for sure. Live. I'm into it too. It's going to be well, awesome. And it's a it's going to be our new texting community where we're going to get back to everybody that we can and drop some crazy content, free content and free um, the calculator that you just came up with. Mm. That's right. The calling calculator. Sales material. I mean, everything for insurance agents, this is it. It's the best texting community out there for insurance agents. Well, what the heck is that number again? I can't remember it. It's 520-214-2219. That's okay. 520-214-2219. I love it. I'm going to text it right now. 520-214-2219. All right. I'll see you later, Mr. Jason. Bye, Mr. Craig. Wait, do they even listen to this on the radio anymore? <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I love it. Nice. Uh, all right.